Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And here we were in the mountains having such a great time sharing with this one at the hotel, you know. And the waitress said, oh, I knew you were people of God. I knew you were a servant of Jesus. I can tell it. I said, oh, that, that, that's something to praise God for. It's a great responsibility. Yes, it is. Brother. See, it's a high oh. responsibility. In all of our attitudes, in all of our words, all of our manners, they must be pure and gentle and kind and holy. To be like pure and undefiled Amen. through Jesus. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful time we have. And this man that carried all of our luggage up, oh, I had a time with him. Oh, I wish you'd have heard what he told me the few days. Oh, you see, it's wonderful how God helps you. I was on the elevator today. And one of my black brothers that I love so much there, he had his white coat on. And I got on, he said, where have you been so long? <laughs> well, if I'd have told him where I'd been, it'd have been a long message. Long story, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I was making a long distance call. I was making a call, and I said, Reverend Helm's come on. She said, are you Reverend Helm? She said, I'm Irma here at the desk. She said, oh, she, we'd had times of sharing with her. Of course, I can't keep track of everybody. But, oh, what a time I had with Irma, the, the operator of the telephone there. What's your call? Oh, yes, What's that was a call? surprise because I didn't know, you know, when I called that she'd be on. You never know. They, uh, here I'm there, you know. And here I had this great experience with her on the phone while I was calling my wife today. So it's a, it's a joy to have great times with the operators and with uh, the people that wait on you. Our black brothers and sisters, white brothers and sisters. When I came in the other day, uh, Brother Oliver and his people had these three beautiful rooms for us. And in the middle room was the, uh, the sofa and the chairs and the provisions and the refrigerator and the lazy Susan with all beautiful nuts. These nuts you get out of a wire and all these beautiful things and all these provisions and things here. Why, well, it was a sight to behold. I went in there and there was 18 roses in that vase. I looked at them, and they were lovely. I went to my wife's room with 18 roses for her, too. And I thought it was so good, so the next day I just took the vase out and just gave the two best ones to the maids. I knew they'd like that. So I just put, I said, here, just take the best ones I have. And you see, it's a wonderful experience if you could just help somebody. Yes, sir. Help somebody. Oh, yes. Yes. Get a kind word or give them a rose if we have one. We can't give anything we don't have. But anything we have, we'll give. Glory to Happy. God. <laughs> <laughs> give it, it should be given you Amen. full measure, pressed Praise down, God. full, shaken around, Praise running over, shall men give it to your bosom. For in the same measure that you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Oh, that's something to my heart. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, it's a great story. You see, when you walk with Jesus and you get where Jesus is, it makes you happy. Now, if you don't walk with him, you don't know what's going on. You're trying to figure out what this is. But when you walk with Jesus, you say, oh, this is so sweet. This is so sweet. It's like morning. It is morning. It is morning in my heart. Jesus made the gloomy shadow all depart. For since Jesus is my king. He is now my everything. It is morning. It is morning in my heart. I used to sing that 40 years ago. And so I'd fit right in right well there, even though I've been hurting in the throat for so long, not able to sing anymore. But God Praise gave me a song. I said, man. if I could get all the music that in, gets inside of me sometimes, I think well, if I could get it out, yeah. I believe that it would touch some hard heart or some dear heart. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> I believe it. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is Lord. He's on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're grateful that he, he cares about everyone. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. He knows all about your heartaches. He knows about your troubles, your tests, your struggles, your disappointments. Now, he tells me someone here got a disappointment. Yes, he says, there's one here that has disappointment. I ask Jesus to go and take that away. Just go, Jesus, to this one that's had a little disappointment at home or at work. Well, I just found out where it was. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Yes, sir. Jesus, Lord, told me right where that disappointment was. 
You just go right there and take care of this one. Take care of this one in the name of Jesus. Now, when Jesus sent out his servants, he says, you go and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely receive, freely give. Amen. And you bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So someone came in with one and Jesus just comes and he'll just kind of disappear. Just kind of dissipate. Just take it away. Drift away like a cloud and be gone. Jesus is Lord. Amen. He is coming again. And his coming is at hand. And no man knows when he's coming. The angels do not know when he's coming. The son said, I do not know, but my father only. Now that ought to convince everybody of the Trinity. Yes, sir. That's right. Because Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, I do not know when I'm coming again. But he said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? Then he said, Few there be that find this life. Matthew 7, 14. Yep. See, there's millions that claim it, but only a very few following. The only people that are Christians are the people that are following Jesus. Not following a religious pattern. Not following what they think is right, but following the King of glory right behind him. Amen. You can't see him, you can't feel him, but you walk by faith, yes, by the word of God, yes, by the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. By the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now the sons of God know each other by the witness of the Holy Spirit. His Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. But the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Do you know that every true servant of God is not known in this world unless the Holy Ghost reveals it? And I preached that for many years. And then after I'd read the Bible for a few times, 40 some years ago, I found that verse 43 years ago. When I'd read the Bible through, I've read it through in about three to four months. And I was so blessed I read it through again, you know, in about three to six months. And I was so happy I read it through another six months. Of course, I spent about two or three hours, you know, in prayer a day and reading from one to 25 chapters a day. And I found that verse. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That's what was falling on us up here a while ago. Praise God. What manner of love that the Father bestowed upon us, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Jesus not. See, there wasn't any church leader of uh, status that knew Jesus. There wasn't a scribe, there wasn't an elder, there wasn't a priest that knew him. The only one that knew Jesus outside of his mother was Simeon. Talking about men now. It said, Behold, in Jerusalem there was a man whose name was Simeon. And it was revealed to him that he should not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he was led by the Holy Ghost to the temple. And it was revealed to him as he went in, he saw a little baby, 40 days old. And when he saw this little baby, his name was Jesus. He was never introduced to him, but he knew him by the Holy Ghost. He went directly and took that baby out of Mary's arms and took him up in his own arm and said, No, Lord, let thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. He was 40 days old, and he knew him because he was a man where the Holy Ghost was upon him. It was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost. And what I privileged to have fellowship with Simeon, you know, as the communion of saints. If you walk with Jesus once in a while, he lets you commune with the saints in your heart. Beautiful. Here and abroad and above. Amen. Doesn't make any difference if it's in Europe or in Asia or in heaven. Or right here where we are. Amen. Glory. I didn't know I was going to have such a great time. Wonderful. I never know what Jesus has in store. The eye hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man. 
the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But they are revealed to us by the Spirit. Yea, the Spirit of God searcheth the deep things of God. He said, the eyes not seen it yet. Get this now. The ears never heard of it yet. It's never entered into the heart of man, the things. Heaven's not thing. Things deteriorate. Things rust. Things decay. Come and go. The things he hath prepared. Now I want you to know that's past tense. He's already had these wonderful things prepared for those who, to whom? Those that love him. Who are they? Who are they that love him? The men and the women, the boys and the girls that have forsaken all to follow. Have left all to follow. Because he said if a man saves his life, he's going to lose it. That's been my burden for the church for 48 years. We're working so hard in the church to save our life that we're going to lose it. But he that will lose his life for my sake, he that will forsake all, he that will deny self, he that will be crucified to the carnal nature that loses all, he, he loses his status among men because he can't do what men want him to do. He said, he shall find his life. I have not seen, their ears never heard, it's never entered into the heart of man, the things that God hath prepared, past tense, for those that love him, they that serve him, they that walk with him, they that obey him. Only those that obey the Holy Spirit love him. And God said to Jonah, go to Nineveh. And the self in him said, go to Tarshish. So he let the self in him. Wasn't denied. He didn't deny the self in him. So he went where his self wanted to go and fail God. And see, that's what happens with men and women today. They want to go to the job they want to go. They want to go to the school they want to go. They want the companion they want. But you see, when we get the companion we want, then we're in trouble. Unless both are truly sanctified. Now, God can take two people, and they may be far off. But if they will give their heart to Jesus and persevere to the inner crucifixion of the carnal nature until Jesus cleanses out all the evil of the carnal nature in them, and fills them with the Holy Ghost. He can take two persons and make them one. Even when they're in trial. He'll, 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 he will make them one. It, the, the secret is in the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost working in the obedient heart. It's a great secret. Simple, but profound. Yes, sir. And it works. Oh, Hallelujah. glory to God. My wife says to people, if people will believe what God tells my husband, it will work. We've been together 53 years, and she has seen it work in various parts of the world. Yes, sir. Because yes. Jesus knows what to do, and I don't know, but he knows, and he can reveal it for his glory. Not because we seek to know, but because it just comes by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, one day, the Holy Spirit revealed to me, because I'd prayed for a long time, about Charles and all the followers of Jesus and their loneliness and their cry. So I called him one day and I said, Oh, I have found a servant. His name is Robert Morey. And I believe, Charles, I believe that you and this precious son will become very close. And as you pray together, as you deny self, and are crucified of every evil part of the nature, and obey and walk in holy light, oh, you're going to have a great time together. I don't know how many years ago it was when I told you that. Was it three years or two years or four, four years? years ago. Four years ago. Yeah, in the fifth year. And you see Jesus gave the revelation. And you see tonight, you're so dear to each other. Yes, so yes, close. God. Because of Jesus' blood. Yes. Yes, because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, just uh, so close. You, so close in Jesus. And so God has all these things prepared. He has all these things prepared. They're all ready. And if we go slow enough and obey every leading, when we get to it, when we get to that which is ours, he will say, here, here, this is for you. And you stop and say, oh, I didn't know it was so great. Oh, I didn't know it was so wonderful. It's all prepared for you. A great inner delight, a great inner blessing, a wonderful thing he had all prepared for him. And he will not let the trusting heart miss anything that belongs to him.
But if we're trustless and disobedient, we miss all the towers. So then it's place we pick up earthly troubles. We, we pick up earthly desires and they crush us to death. We get this home and we get that place and God didn't lead it, so it just causes a lot of distress. My father, when he was a young man, always wanted to own his father's farm. That was his aspiration. One day, that was accomplished. He said, son, I never was so miserable in my life. He said, it was the awfulest thing. I did, oh, I didn't know. I thought it'd be great to own my father's farm, but when I got it, it was, I was miserable. I was unhappy. It was awful. Yeah. See, he had always thought. See, the carnal mind will tell you that things of earth are going to be great. Yeah. But unless God leads it, it leaves you empty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when the Lord provides, he can take something that doesn't look like it's very much. But you think it's almost a palace. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You think yes, sir. it's so wonderful. You want everybody to sit. And they come in, look around. They say, what's so good about it? Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, where's the wonder of the place? It's all in the inside of the soul. Amen. Oh, that's where it's at. You know, when I left all to go with Jesus many, many years ago, a few decades ago, to do God's will, not my own, or my wife, or my father and mother, or the bishop, or district or pretended or friends, or minister or friends, just to do God's will, not my own at all. Why, the Holy Spirit, oh, the Holy Spirit, oh, it just seemed like that what he gave me was so good, it seemed like I had everything. Maybe one pair of shoes, maybe one suit of clothes, maybe it wasn't too good, but oh, I was so thankful for where I was, that I had my wife and my children and I had brothers and sisters. Once in a while, I could find someone I could fellowship with. Yeah. Maybe I had a handful then. I don't know. But, oh, I'd go from place to place, church to church, home to home, the country to, uh, city to city, and I'd tell the church people, I said, is that God? Boy, what do you know about that? But when I'd find someone to walk with Jesus, oh, praise the Lord, it's in my heart. Oh, God is witnessing to me. I'm blessed. The Lord. So I'd find a friend. Yes, sir. Amen. I'd find a friend. Amen. I used to be so hungry and starved for Holy Ghost fellowship when my baby brothers, they're twins. One's a mother's preacher and one's retired from the government now. They're 60 years old. I would go, this 42 years ago, I would take a bus from Hartford City, Indiana, and go all the way to Muncie, take another bus all the way out to Plant One of Warner Gay and sit on the curb until my brother, 18 years of age, would get off work at 11.30 at night, and we'd get off. I'd tell him about the kingdom of God. He said, oh, I feel the power. I'd tell him about He says, well, I have the witness. I just went all that way just like so find yes, somebody sir. have the witness to, Glory to, to God. the fellowship oh, and the Holy God. Ghost with Hallelujah. my baby brother. Yes, sir. He tells people now that when he was a little boy, when I was converted, he was six years old. And he said that he'd come home and tell mother and me and all my brothers, say I had five brothers younger than I, he'd tell us, and he said, I just get the witness so many times. He said over and over and over again. So you see, what you hunger for is the fellowship of Jesus' people. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. And if you ever walk with Jesus, you long to be with somebody that's going with the Christ and following God by the Holy Ghost. Not following God by some idea. Not following God by some thought. But following God by the witness of the Holy Spirit. And when you find that person, oh, the fellowship is so sweet and it may be an hour or two. Like uh, here recently with all these dear ones coming out here, going places. God will bless us and help us and lift our souls. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a wonderful Amen. story, isn't it? Yes, it's sir. It's a beautiful story. Thank you, of his Jesus. love praise and his grace. Thank you, Jesus. And glory to God. Praise so we thank him and praise him for this privilege of being here. You can tell right well that I'm at home. Oh, and oh, I'm just so happy to get back home again. Just look at all the thousands of miles I've crossed the ocean. How many times? Ten or twenty times since I was here. Just think of it. Been in many countries since I was here. Here are going to be 71 years of age. and God's been so merciful to me. I've just been so great of his love, of his care. Oh, just think the wonderful things God's done for me. Oh, we praise him, praise him, praise him. Glory and glorify him. Since we found you, it's been a sight how many times I've been across the ocean. 
And Jesus helped me to love the people in Europe yeah. and the Middle East and in India and in Nigeria yeah. and Egypt and most of the countries of Europe and Hawaii twice in Jamaica. The first time in Jamaica, we saw the maid saved right in the room. She found Jesus right there. Two days later, saw, saw the alternate maid saved. Find Jesus there. When we were in Bermuda at the famous Elba Hotel, about the third day, I said to my wife, just hit the keyboard. She says, oh, boy, I don't want to. I don't want to play because people might not appreciate Oh, I said, they'll love it. They couldn't help it. <laughs> Such gifts as she had. Uh, oh, the, she has the gift of music. She's had it since she was six hours old, and she's 75 now. And she doesn't look 75. No, sir. And, and people will say to me the other day when I was coming to Atlanta, Georgia, and we were on con one concourse, and they had to take us in a, in a car across the other one. This precious, beautiful man, he said, where did you ever find this beautiful woman? I said, Jesus gave her to me 53 years ago. He said, God's blessed you. I said, hallelujah, yes. He said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if he'd have heard her play, I think he'd have danced around and hollered for joy. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Because God helped her. The other day, she was playing the piano. I was upstairs. It was, she was in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I came down. It was in the Holy Ghost. And I went up to her and I kissed her. And I said, honey, the power of God is in your playing. She said, yes, I feel it. I recognize it. I'm just upstairs getting ready, doing something, and she plays, and the Holy Ghost is in the playing. Together 53 years, only a little while, and I'm not, I'm not kidding anyone. I mean, it seems like a little while. Now, if we hadn't walked with Jesus, uh, one year has been a, quite a while. But you see, when you walk with Jesus, a long time is a short time. But if you don't walk with Jesus, a short time is a long time. Right. To let Jesus have his way. Someone says, is this really work? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is true. I've never kidded my wife. I've never kidded my children or my grandchildren. My grandchildren, the oldest ones, are 30 years old. And they told me when they were married nine years ago, this lovely daughter that came from West Virginia because of church number six, she said, and I talked to her last night, and her, her voice was like morning. And my grandson, 30 years of age, he's on our staff. He wants to go to Oklahoma with us so badly. Maybe he'll, he'll get to go the next time we trust. She said to me nine years ago, Grandfather, David and I have talked it over, and we want to live next door to you and grandmother. A granddaughter, now 30 years of age, they want to live next door. And then we have this grandchild over here with our daughter and husband. Then we have this daughter here and granddaughter with her husband. And they're right here with us, 12. And we talk about the kingdom when we get together in Thanksgiving or when we're home. Oh, we had such a wonderful time. Uh, the joy of the Lord is so precious that the little children know it. Yes. Little children know yes, it. Oh, we can't do that. We're nothing. We, we're nothing. But he's everything. Yes, he is. He is everything. I need more. I have very little of him, but I need more. Hallelujah. When I say I have so little, the Bible said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Who are the poor in spirit? Lord, I'm a beggar of your truth. I have so little of your love. I'm a beggar. Give me more of your love. I have so little. Poor in spirit. Oh, God, I have so little of your wisdom. I'm poor. I need more wisdom. Poor in spirit. I need more of your knowledge. I have so little knowledge. Would you grant me a little more of your knowledge because I'm so limited? Poor in spirit. He said, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit. Knowing they're nothing. Knowing they don't have much. We have so little. But what little we have is sweet. How little we have, it's good. However little it is, it's delightful. Amen. However a little it is, it's refreshing. Amen. However a little it is, it's peaceful. And oh, such springs. It well up and he said, I shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. It's right there now. 
He said, I'll be in you a well of water springing up into everlasting life. One night I preached on that in 1952, and I came home for family prayer with my wife and children, and I got in there, and God seemed like it uh, got a hose attached to my heart, and it was just coming through me like that. Yeah, about 11 or 12 o'clock at night, having family prayer, the glory of God was coming right through me just like a big hose just all attached to my heart. God's got some wonderful things for us. We'll give him all the praise. Jesus must have all the glory. Hallelujah. So we are grateful that Jesus cares about you. you Jesus. About me. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. No. No. Uh, he's able. Doesn't matter what's the situation that he's able. Yeah. If we'll just hold steady and give God all the glory for it. Amen. Jesus, all the praise for it. Yeah. He'll take care of you. But he's been wanting men to follow him. And when he was here on earth, he didn't have many to follow him. Oh, there'd be 3,000, 5,000. They came for the multitude. They came for the loaves and the fishes. They came to touch him to be healed. But he cried. He cried over and over. Let him that has an ear, let him hear. They couldn't hear what he said. They couldn't hear what he said. There was only a handful that heard what Jesus said, seemed to me like. Here he was in this great meeting. They were coming with a multitude. They were coming up through there. And Jesus was coming, and they were having a great time. I don't know how many people were healed, and I don't know how many people were lifted, and I don't know how many people uh, found the distress leaving their hearts. But the meeting that they had with that multitude, when he got under a tree, he stopped suddenly. And right above him in a sycamore tree was a tax collector. He had come early and saw that he was too short to see Jesus, who he was. So he climbed and he said, I'll just climb a tree so I'll, I'll be able to see him as he passes by this way. And the people were all there with Jesus, had this great meeting for an hour or two or more, multitude. And Jesus stopped suddenly. The meeting and the drama changes. The yeah. scene Change from the multitude to a man in a tree, a tax collector, a rich man, and he's climbed that tree. And when he climbed the tree, he probably caught his beautiful robes on the knobs and the sharp bri the sharp bark. But he went right on up. He didn't let the little pinching and the hurting of his shin stopping. He went right on up, 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 climbing until he was hidden in the foliage. And when Jesus came, he stopped and looked up. And you see, he knew he was there all the time because he knows where we are, where we are. If we're in the pit of despair, he knows it. If we're in the seat of the scornful, he knows it. If we're in the seat of the love of the world, he knows it. If we're in the chair of self-desire, he knows it. If we're on a faraway country roaming, he knows it. And so he stopped for a man was in a tree. A man that wanted to see who he was. Now this man had to die out the public opinion. Because public opinion would laugh at him and scorn him and make fun of him. So he had to climb over an awful lot of public opinion to ever climb that tree. They thought perhaps he was crazy. That he wasn't just realizing what he was doing. But he knew full well what he was doing because he was going to see who Jesus was. That's all he wanted. Oh, he had everything. He had a bank account. He had his own. He, see, he was a rich man yes, worth 100000 200000 300000 about 300000 He had plenty. But see, that didn't satisfy him. So he climbed a tree to see the Galilee and the stranger of Galilee. And while he's up there, Jesus comes and stops. They had never been known to be together before. He had never seen Jesus. Jesus had never seen him. Perfect stranger. Jesus stops, looks up, and says, Zacchaeus, make haste to come down, for today I'm going to dine in thy house. There isn't hardly an account of Scripture where Jesus invited himself home with anybody. 
if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's hardly any place he ever invited himself home with them. And uh, you've been through seminary and school, and you have been in the Bible for years, but we don't know of hardly any one in Scripture invited uh, that Jesus invited himself to their home. But this man in the tree was recipient of this. Now, when Zacchaeus went up, he went up lonely. When he went up, it was dark. When he went up, people were finding fault with him. When he went up, he was heavy. When he went up, he was pressing. When he went up, he left everyone on the ground. Yes, sir. He didn't take anybody up there with him. No, he left them all. And when he went up, he was in a great find. A great find with Jesus. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. And when he said, make haste and come down, he came down light. <laughs> he went up a sinner and came down a Christian. Glory, glory, glory. And glory. He said, make haste and come down, for I'm going home with you. I'm going to eat with you today. He didn't tell any of that multitude. They'd had a great meeting. He said, I'm going to your house today. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have been there? Yes. Oh. But you see, we're right here, so we're having a wonderful time right here. See, we're having a great time right here. Together. Right here. Because Jesus is here. See, God's here. The Holy Ghost, Jesus, is here. Yes, right here with us. Right here. Right here. We're nothing, but he's everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, you know, he came down. The scripture said that Zacchaeus came down and received him joyfully. He came down with haste, first of all. He heard his voice. He heeded his voice, and he obeyed him and came down haste with haste. He went up slow and came down fast. Yes, sir. He said, you come down with haste. Yes. Now, he could have said, come down slow and don't hurt yourself. We've got plenty of time to go home. Jesus was anxious to get with a man that wanted to see him so bad. He said, get down here where I could be with you. I'm, a, I'm alone. I'm alone. Yes, sir. And you know what happened with that multitude? They all murmured. They all murmured. They all murmured and found fault with Jesus because he had gone home with a sinner. And I found out when I read this, I, I preached 52 years before I saw it. I don't read commentaries. I saw that the whole multitude was not with Jesus. You can't be with Jesus and murmur. What? No. Anybody that murmurs is not with Jesus. Anybody that complains is not with Jesus. Anybody that finds fault with people is not with Jesus. They're just kidding themselves. And they all murmured at Jesus because he was gone home to be with a sinner. You see, they judged that he was a sinner. And the truth was, he was now no sinner. He had come down to receive Jesus joyfully. There's no sinner that received Jesus joyfully. And they, they judged he was a sinner. They said in the seat of the scornful. And Jesus didn't have one in the multitude with him. See, I preached 52 years. See, I never heard this anywhere. No, sir. No. Never. I, uh, Jesus revealed this to me after I'd walked with him in about 52 years. It's by God's grace I'd ever have another revelation. See, that gives the Lord all the glory, Amen. all the praise. Amen. So you see, with this multitude, there wasn't one with Jesus. The only one he had was a man in a tree. And they said he was a sinner. And so Jesus went home with him. And Jesus could rest because there was no murmur in Zacchaeus. There was no murmuring in him. Just a delight to look at him and be with him. The delight. So Jesus went home to rest. Isn't this sweet? It's beautiful. And it's a, he went home with him to, to rest. See, Jesus was so lonely when he was here because he was perfect. He was without sin. And the Bible wants us to become perfect. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father is. What's the word? Perfect. Does he say that? 
Did he say that? Yes, sir. And you know, a lot of theologians, if you read after them, they say that's not possible in this life. Right. And that isn't possible as long as the heart is carnal. That's why lots of people don't want to follow Jesus because they want to keep carnality in their heart, which prevents us from perfection in Christ. No one can be perfect. No one can create perfection. But everyone that follows Jesus will become in his likeness. He leads them to perfection, not to conflict and division. See, the church of God cannot have any conflict in it. For it is not the church of God. It's a church of the enemy. Whenever there's the slightest conflict in any group of people that claim to be the church, and they argue, then they're not of Jesus Christ. They're of another spirit. Yes. <clears throat> because Jesus said in this word right here, you say, Brother Helm, do you have scripture for that? Oh, yes. Yes, sure to do. And Jesus said here in his servant Paul that the church of God is to be like this. And this is a wonderful order of Jesus, of God. He said to the church, I beseech you, brethren, that's sisters, also, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he was born of the Virgin Mary. And he came from God. He was divine. That ye all speak the same thing. Now, he said the church must all speak the same thing. Now, if there's carnality in anyone, it's this. It's always different. Carnality, everyone that's carnal never speaks the same thing. They don't speak together. There's conflict. But he said the church will all speak the same thing. That's the 10th verse of the first chapter of Corinthians. And this not just to the church at Corinth, but to the church at Ephesus, the church at Philippi, Thessalonica, in Jerusalem, in Rome. It's a church here on earth that we all speak the same thing. Now, if we're not cleansed of the carnal nature, then this one thinks this and this one thinks that. But if we're cleansed of the carnal nature, everyone thinks together because they have the mind of Christ. See, where Christ's mind is, it's one. And there's yes. no conflicts in it. And his church is built on that rock. That he is the Christ. Amen. The Son of the living God. And everyone that follows him all speak the same thing. Yes, sir. They're all together. And all the joy they have together. He said they all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you. It cannot be that there's any divisions in the church. Because carnality, wherever there's carnality, there's division. If you have two carnal men, they're divided. Some of the time. When they don't think alike. When they have contrary ideas. And so there cannot be any division among the people of the Church of Jesus Christ. Because if they do, they have cancers, and that cancer will kill the body, hospitalize it, and then the community will be lost, and the church will be held in judgment for it. But that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind. Jesus said the church is to be joined, perfectly joined. Yes. Perfectly. He didn't say joined in the same mind. He said perfectly joined in the same mind. Yes. And in the same judgment. That's the requirement of the church. I didn't write that, but that's written about 1900 years before I was born. See, but I'm sent of God to tell the church Amen. that we must be holy Amen. and pure. Amen. And it's not in us. It's all in Christ. Because the church needs to be sanctified. And yesterday when I prayed, do you know where my burden was? The unsanctified. So I spoke of that at Maranatha last night. But my burden yesterday was unsanctified. Now the unsanctified man and woman is the person that's been saved from their sins. S-I-N-S. -S, sins which they committed since the receipts of accountability. But when they're forgiven of our sins, and I was forgiven for my sins on the 22nd day of January, 1933, all my sins I'd committed since I received of accountability was bought it out from yeah. me. And I had peace. I had peace. Never had, had peace before. But I still had that inbred sin nature, the carnal mind. I'd be angry, you know, I'd get hostile. I'd talk about people. Not much, but probably did. 
And uh, I was impatient and jealous. Now that's all in the carnal mind. Yeah. And you see when you have jealousy and fault finding in you or lust or the love of the world, then that carnality will prevent us from minding Jesus from walking with God. We'll walk in the flesh. And you see, we cannot walk in the flesh and please God because we grieve him. But those that follow Jesus are one. And they are those that have been cleansed of the carnal nature. Jesus said the first two steps after conversion, if a man's going to follow me, let him deny himself and take the cross. That's inner death. See, that touches me now. Praise God. Thank you. See, that operates. Just as soon as we're saved, See, as soon as I was saved, I had to deny myself and then take the cross and be cleansed and crucified of this carnal nature. Or I would not really be following. I'd be following a religious pattern. Yes. A beautiful thing. See, it's possible to preach and pray and testify and win people to Jesus and never really follow what Jesus said. Just follow what we want, what we like. And the only way you know whether you're following Jesus or not is by the Holy Spirit and by the Word. And when you're following Jesus, or I'm following Jesus, the evidence that I'm following is that I love my neighbors, myself, I love my enemies, and I love my friends. Because Jesus said we're to love our enemies. Now, we can't do that. The carnal nature won't let us do that. But when the carnal nature is cleansed, it's automatic. Praise it's God. spontaneous. Amen. You don't have to work to love your enemies. It's already there. Right. You can't tell your enemies from your friends. If anybody's with you, they don't know who the friends are and the enemies because you treat everyone alike. Because the Bible said if we have respect to persons, we commit sin. Yes. Yes. And so we're all to be perfectly joined together in the same mind, the same judgment. And Jesus wants the church. I talked about it last night. He wants the church to be perfect in one. He prayed that. In the 17th chapter of St. John, he said, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, that's the 18th verse, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, Jesus said, I will sanctify myself. Now he's perfect. Jesus is already divine. Yes. See, he's, he's God incarnated in human flesh. He's the only one born since Adam that was not carnal mind, was not a carnal man. See, Jesus was without carnality. But every baby that's been born since Adam, since disobedience, see, disobedience brought us into carnality and death. Disobedience. So you see, when we're born again, the only thing that's going to bring us to the inner life of holiness is obedience. We fell by disobedience, so the way back through Jesus' blood is obedience, following Jesus. Amen. Following him. He said, follow me. Yeah. We can't follow him because carnality will not let us follow. True. Carnality will want us to follow yeah. what man likes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't this simple? Yeah. But see, it's the secret yeah. of the universe to find life. It's in Christ Jesus. So Jesus said, I sanctify myself. He's divine. He's pure. He's holy. I've always marveled at this since I found it, that Jesus being divine and perfect and holy would say, and for their sake, that's all of us. He said, I'm going to go through the same way that you'll come through. Just like he went to death. He said, I'm going to sanctify myself. I'm going to come and sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, he said. But he said, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. To the church must become one. For it is in the church. See, if we do not become one, we're not the church. We're just a group of people meeting together trying to do something religiously. But he said that they all may be one, that thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now, I said, this will convince the world when the church becomes one. Amen. That's when the kingdom comes. Yeah. We pray thy will, be done thy kingdom come. See, when the kingdom comes, it's the power, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And when it comes, it draws all men to Jesus. 
We don't have to have great crusades or preaching to get people saved. All we have to do is follow Jesus, the power of all, and bring them in. Uh, we don't bring them. We bring them in by cesarean birth, but he brings them in by spiritual birth. Glory to God. See, if I bring someone in and, and a pressure, then they're, they're born in by me pressing, but not with a trusting heart. But if he brings them in, they're brought in with a trusting heart. Praise God. Jesus works. Amen. Isn't this precious Glory that God Jesus. wants us to be one? That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me. Now, he said we're all to be one as God is in Jesus, and Jesus in the Father, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That's verse 21. Then he said, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. See, this has got to be preached to the church everywhere. Yes, sir. Constantly. Continually until we get the message in our heart. Because if we get it in our mind, we may never pursue it very far. It must get into the heart. Because only what's in the heart maneuvers the man. Whatever the heart is, that's what the man does. Because the heart, what's in the heart of man controls the will. And the will of man, you see, is altogether different from the carnal nature than the will of God. Because if our heart's not right, we will to do the will of man. But if our heart's right with God, we will to do God's will. And see, since Adam, most all men born have will to do what they like or what seems to be feasible and reasonable. But when we do God's will, we have to die to do it. That's why Jesus went to the cross. See, he went to the cross to die to save me, and I have to take a cross and die on it to follow. See, our great trouble in the church has been in the ages is that we tried to follow Jesus without the inner death. Instead of that, we want blessings, and we want miracles, and we want signs, and we want all these great manifestations, and they're all so sweet, all so precious. I don't want to miss any of them. But he wants us to come by the way of the inner death, and then we follow and that's the way we come to be one. That's why they have church conflicts. It's because of carnality in us. It must be cleansed out. That they may be one even as we are one. Now verse 23. I in them, thou in me. Now there's the church now. That they be made perfect in one. He said that they be made perfect. Be made you know, we make this, we make that, we make this, and we make this, and we make that. Now, he said that they be made perfect. Now, we can't do that ourselves. This comes in denying self and being crucified of the carnal nature and following Jesus. That's the secret. Yes. But I've been convinced that so few are willing to do that in my 53 years of following and I'm trying to love people to a place where they'd be willing, you know. Just be willing to follow him. Now, God said he was with me right there. Praise God. He said, I am with thee right now. God tells me I am with thee. He said that they be made perfect in one. Now, get this. This is a tremendous revelation. That they be made perfect in one. That the world may know. Now, that means this side of death. Yes, sir. See, theologians say it's on the other side of death. He said that the world may know tells me he wants it on this side of death. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that's right, brother. That the world may know. Yes. That tells me we are to be perfect and one this yes. side of death. Yes. Amen. 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 And yet the theologians have said, and there's also one where they said we can't do it until we get to heaven. You see why God is so grieved? Did you get a little yes. glimpse? Just a slight glimpse or a great glimpse? or a magnificent glimpse, or a mighty one. But they be made perfect in one that the world may know. That's this side of death. Yes. I said to Terry last night, I said, read it to the church. Tell them to be sure to recognize that when he said that, that is this side of death, not the other side. Jesus made it very plain. Now, in order to be made perfect in what it means that we have to forsake all, leave all, and not make any of the plans ourselves. See, carnality is good at making plans and instigating and manipulating. 
But see, carnality must be cleansed out of us. And when once it's cleansed out, get this, when once carnality is cleansed out through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost and fire. See, when God's blood in Jesus Christ comes down upon us to cleanse out this old, nasty, evil, deceitful, dark, a hideous nature that we're born with. Evil power. He comes and cleanses that out. It's a death, and it's right there now. I can feel it. He comes in, and oh, my, my. Oh, how wonderful. And he begins to cleanse out this awful nature, and it's a great death, and the power of God begins to come into the heart with such sweetness and compassion, and all murmuring leaves. All murmuring departed. All hate has gone. All conflict has gone. All judgmental spirit is gone. And it will stay gone as long as we follow Jesus and obey. But if we do not obey, then carnality comes right back in the heart. Now, God is, I've given this illustration several times. God has given me an illustration to let you know how much carnality wants back in the human heart. This is just simple. But there at the condominium where we are, see, I walked with Jesus 43 years before uh, we were so privileged. And uh, you see, my wife said to me 40, 50 years ago, do you think we'll ever be able to be along the Atlantic Ocean, look at it for five days or ten? And I could have said, the Lord will withhold no good thing from them that would walk uprightly. At God's time, it's his time. I, I've not sought after houses or land or cars or clothes or things of earth. But just seek first the kingdom of God. And then he can add all these things that he's just helped us so much. He's helped us so much. It's in the realm of the miraculous. And you know what he's telling me now? I lead, guide, direct, and tell you what to do. Glory right now, Glory. in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And after 43 years, after 43 years, Jesus made the way miraculous to his people for us to have a condominium on the Atlantic. Now, I could take a, I could take a uh, gallon jar like the old-timers used to carry milk in, you know. Yes. Uh, it was a beautiful, clear glass jar, till one gallon, you put a cork in it. And you can get your milk and put it down in the, in the pump house and keep it cool during the day so it won't sour so soon. You know, that's a long time ago. Okay. But you can take that beautiful gallon jar, jug, and it's a perfect vacuum. It's clean. It's been scalded. You've gotten all the water out of it. It's dried out completely. There's not one bit of moisture in it. And you put the cork in it. And take it. I can take it out there to the Atlantic Ocean, and I put it down one foot beneath the surface. And do you know what happens? All the drops of the Atlantic Ocean will say, I want into that jar, and then just try to press into it all around. In fact, there isn't any place on that jar or on that cork but what the water is trying to get inside of it. Yes. 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 Now, if you submerge that jar five feet below the surface, then there's a greater pressure for that water to get in. Mm. Now, if you submerge it 10 feet, the pressure is much greater. Yes. If you submerge it 50 feet, then it's a tremendous force that's trying to get in that jar. Yeah. Now you could take that down to 100 feet, and it's, it's almost doubled or more. And if you take that jar deep enough in the Atlantic out there where we live, far enough, it will collapse. The instant before collapsing. The instant before collapsing is how hard those drops are trying to get in that jar of carnality wants to get back in the heart of man when it's once sanctified. It wants to come back and reign and make the plans again and get in there and by disobedience to try to fell us and keep us divided. The force of the powers of hell and the devil wants to get back in a man or a woman that's truly sanctified and if we think ourselves to be something, he's back. Yes, sir. Carnality is back. Yes, sir. See, if we think we're anything. Yeah. See, the Bible says, he that thinketh himself to be something when he is nothing deceives himself. So I, I, I could see that the greatest thing to do, one of the great things is to become nothing. And the only way we can become nothing is to follow Jesus. Yes. And he takes all of evil out of it so we become nothing. 
See, when a man gets all carnal out, he's nothing. He's this room for Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. And when we're nothing, you see, then he's everything. Now, as long as we think we're somebody, then you see carnality's in there and it's going to have its way. Well, you see, if you've got two or three carnal men in a church, you've got a conflict. Yeah. This one's somebody, this one's somebody, and they want it this way, and they don't like the hymn book this way, and someone with the lights. And then you've got carnality, and it causes division. Right. Yeah. But if carnality is cleansed out of us, then you have spirituality, and that's rest, and that's togetherness. Hey. Because you know, what, you know what the spiritual man will say? Let's pray and see what God wills. We're not going to have our will in this. Now, carnal man says, let me tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Now, this is the way to do it. Carnal, carnal men and women will say, this is the way it is. But spiritual men will say, let's let the Holy Spirit lead us. And what God leads is so different than what we want. But it's much better for us. Amen. It's much better for us. So you see, when we think we're somebody, when we're really nothing, we're deceived. So that's what carnality has done. Carnality, since, since Adam fell, has caused man to die and be cheated from God's wonderful eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see, God wants to teach, and he teaches those that follow Jesus that we're nothing, we can do nothing, but Jesus can do all things. Glory. And I said to Oliver a few years ago, I said, oh, brother, I can't preach. I don't know how to preach or pray or testify. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. See, when I came in here tonight, I was nothing. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. When I went into Oliver's church this morning, I didn't know what to do. When I went into Maranatha uh, last night, I didn't know what to do. Only I knew that God would know to help me. Yes, sir. With the scriptures or whatever. And the one thing I knew was that I had a burden for the unsanctified. That's the people who've been saved that are still carnal. Well, that hurt my heart, Charles and Robert. And see, only as Jesus cleanses me, am I cleansed. You see, or I would be a carnal man if it weren't for the blood of Jesus cleansing me constantly. Yes, Lord. See, I must die out from the morning time I wake up in the morning till the evening, or carnality and the human wants to get back and run my life and crowd Jesus out and still go on making a profession. Yes. But see, Jesus wants the full, full sway in me. At all times. But you see, I have to die from morning to night. So I said, Oliver, I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to witness. I'm nothing. He said, oh, brother, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. Socrates, that great scholar, that great man that said there's just one God, when the Athenians said there are many gods, he said there's only one. Of course, they got after him for it. He lived 300 years before Jesus. He never, he never knew Jeremiah or Moses. But he said, there's just one God, and he said, we're to obey God's voice right here. And if you read about it, he said that he never disobeyed that voice. He always would do what that voice told him. So he started out early in the morning, uh, between 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning in Greece, and he went from house to house, business to business, to talk to people to see if he could find anybody that found out they were nothing. Everyone he talked to until he was 70 years old thought they were somebody. He never found anyone that found out they were nothing. And yet Jesus tells us in the word that we are nothing. God is everything. Yes. Now, when we are willing to become nothing, now you see two somebodies, you can't get them together. Carnality is there, and they're just conflict. But if they become nothing, they just float in there, and you can't see when one begins and the other ends. See, when they're nothing, they're just nothing. Oh, Jesus is just everything. They're just nothing. They become one. You can't tell one from the other because they want the same mind. The mind is Jesus, and he controls it. See, this is a great secret. This is a great secret of the universe of life. So Jesus is Lord, and Jesus wills for us to follow him. And that's why he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and let him follow me. You see, I've been talking about this for 50 some years, about following Jesus. When I was a young man in my pastor, I was trying to find men and women that would really obey God. 
I said when I was 21 years old to 22, I said, if I can find 12 men that will obey God and do everything Jesus wants them to do, there will be a great awakening coming to the last till Jesus comes. I mean, do only Jesus' will. That it means if I can find a dozen people willing for the Lord to cleanse out the carnality out of us and get it all out, and then if we'll obey to keep it out, because if we don't obey and don't pray and do his will, then it comes back in us. Yes, sir. And then we're in bad shape. We're religious, but we're not spiritual. And when God comes in and cleanses out that carnal nature through the blood of Jesus, then we hear his voice, and then we follow. We follow. And when Jesus said, if a man's going to come and follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, and then he said, he's ready then to start following me. <clears throat> and when we are ready to follow Jesus, after the old self is crucified, that's in my heart now. That's right there. Well, I'm unworthy of this. I never read this in a book, only the Bible. No. But when Jesus cleanses my heart and I follow him, it's like heaven to me. Yes, this is like heaven to me. I've crossed over Jordan to Canaan's fair land. And this is like heaven to me. It's like heaven when we follow Jesus. We do his will. God's will. Following Jesus is doing God's will. And we do God's will following Jesus. There is victory in Jesus. There is harmony in the body. There's togetherness in the home and in the church of God. Yes, sir. And the world outside hears and feels that, and they said, whatever you've got, I want it. Yeah. When I was holding the revival at Miami, out of Kokomo, Indiana, there was a young organist, and she came to the organist, and she said, I've got to have what you have. And I said, you have to die to get it, but you can have it. It's free. That's 20, 25 years ago. I said, you can have it. It is that you need to die out to self, and we can't do that. It's as we follow Jesus. It's as we do his will that the power of the God of the universe comes in through the blood of Jesus and cleanses us of this iniquity. Yes. We're having a great seminar here. A great, a great teaching. We're in theological seminary in the scriptures. Glory to God. Uh, this is this is a basic and rock bottom, down to the very core of the beginning. Going with the King of Glory, following Jesus with joy as he arises with healing in his wings. And we follow him by his grace. So doing God's will, and someone will say, how do you know what God's will is? Well, we know God's will by his word, by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Now right there, well, stop right there, because we can't love God with all of our heart as long as we're carnal. Yes. So to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, carnality has to be cleansed out of me. See, and he said, thou shalt, now see, that's God's will. Yeah. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Now, as long as we're born with carnality and it's in there, we can't love him with all of our heart because we're going to love self and we're going to love the things of the world. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. That means carnality, I've got to die. Yeah. Well, this is something more, isn't it? Yes, sir. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. No, not a part, not 99%. That means that if I have the slightest tinge of the love of the world, then I don't love God. Because the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of God is not in him. That's 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Isn't that a marvelous word? Yes, sir. That's oh, I have to die constantly to myself to follow Jesus. And when we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our body, you see, they're all of our strength. See, that takes care of the whole being of the mind, of the soul, of the inner part, and the body, and the strength of the body, yes. Because the strength comes through the body as God gives life. Yeah. 
Because when he takes life, there's no strength. It's gone. And when it's gone, it's death. Yes. Physical death. Yes. Yes. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You see, my burden has been that the, the old self in us will prevent us from hearing his voice and get us into the self-life and cheat us out of what is ours. So we know God's will only by his word when he said, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. But I can't love my neighbor as myself if there's carnality in my heart. I'll talk about them. Yeah. If they don't do what I like, I'll resent it. But Jesus showed me at the baptism of the Holy Ghost 44 years ago, last April the 14th, that I was to never talk about anyone again to my wife or to my children or my brothers or my sisters. Never find fault with anybody again. I preached this the night that Oliver was with me 20 years ago. And what did you do? Stand up and tell him what you did when I said, God has revealed to me that we cannot judge one another anymore. Because that's Romans says that. Jesus said that in the seventh chapter of, of Matthew. And I said, God has taught me that I am not to judge. Now, if our if a carnality gets in there, then we'll start judging and murmuring again. But he wants that cleansed out continually. And I said, we are to be cleansed of this carnal nature. And it struck this precious servant of God, this young minister. And he stood up. What did you say? Turn around and tell them. Cleanse me of this old nature. Only one in the whole congregation. Well, that touched my heart right there, and I got the witness. The Holy Spirit witness. Oh, yes, only. By God's grace. Yes, by God's grace. And I couldn't believe that I've been in the whole of this movement all my life yeah. and never heard it. Yeah. Never anybody ever told me. I told myself. And we didn't know. But it rested between the It's just, it's the word of God. There were five of you got to I make one statement, criticism to the judgment that belongs only to God. That's the truth. God's the only one who can make it. Only one. That's right. No, we can't. We can't do that. Because he cleanses us by his blood constantly. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. As we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ runs through the body and cleanses us from all sin. Amen. So as the blood of Jesus goes through our body and fellowship, we are cleansed from all sin and all iniquity, Thank like the Lord. blood in here takes Thank all the disease out of us. It works against the disease. So when we're in the body of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost, and carnality is cleansed out, and we're in this Holy Spirit fellowship, Amen. then there is the cleansing blood running all through every heart that's completely obedient. That we're completely obedient to blood of Jesus purchased right to us because we're connected with him in following. And the carnality is cleansed out through the blood, not to any of us, but through his blood as we die to obey him and to follow. Oh, that's beautiful. What a revelation. That's great. Thank I never read it in that. any book. I never no, read it in any book, only this book. Glory to God. And we're in debt to Jesus. Amen. Now, I want you to know this, that in following Jesus, in following Jesus, there's no provision to commit sin. When he said, follow me, 
When we're following Jesus, he never leads anybody to sin. But carnality will lead to sin. Uh, and whenever we think we have to sin a little bit, every day you see that's carnality and that grieves God. But he said, follow me. He has never included any part of sin in following. No, sir. Now, I never read that in the book, but it's a great find. Praise God. See, in following Jesus, when you follow him, you're not led to sin. You're led to holiness. Amen. You're led to perfection in Christ. Yeah, that's right. Amen. See, following doesn't include any part of sin or carnality. Because carnality and sin crucified Jesus, the very life that we have in him. Right. Amen. I need more of his love, always. Oh, I'm having a great time. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 So as we follow Jesus and do only Jesus' will, we know we're nothing. That gets in my heart. And he's everything. Yeah. Then he can lead us to do whatever he wants us to do. Because if there's a slightest little bit of self in there, then it will choke Jesus out and crowd him out. And that crowds Jesus out of our life, and we don't know it. We still pray, still read the Bible. He'll testify, but unless we follow Jesus, that old carnal nature is crucified out, you see, out of us, well, then we'll grieve the Holy Spirit and we'll try to run it. But he wants to lead us. Yes. And it's been my burden now in the church for many years that people will follow Jesus instead of, not, instead of following the carnal nature in us. Yes. Because as long as we're sized with carnality, if we just have a tinge of it, well, it'll get the dominance of us. It'll crowd Jesus all the way out. The tiniest little drop of carnality or tinge of it will crowd Jesus out, and he cannot live in a heart. He will not live in a heart where he's not in preeminence. He only lives in the heart where he completely controls it. And that's through following him. Give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, all the thanks. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus found me. Yes, sir. And here my mother taught me to pray in 1917. Going on 70 years ago, she taught me to pray. 69 years. And some months, she began me in prayer, teaching me of God's love and how Jesus died on the cross to save me. That's in my heart. She used to hold me in her arms, and I can look up and see her now. This is 19 and 18, 19 and 19, and... She'd hold me in her arms and she'd begin to sing, Oh, yes, there's power in Jesus' blood. Oh, yes, there's power in Jesus' blood. Oh, yes, there's power in Jesus' blood to wash and make me clean. She'd sing a song to me when I was in her arms. So she taught me against sin. And she taught me and my father to follow Jesus and to pay my bills. But my father said, if a man and woman does not take care of their obligation, Jesus grieved and he, he doesn't lead anybody like that. He doesn't hear their prayers. So when I owe someone, I've got to go to the people I owe and say, I owe you and I don't have the money. I'll give you a quarter. That's all I have. Or I'll give you a dollar whenever I can. And you see, if you go to someone that you owe and say, I'm sorry, I don't have the money, about the time you leave, they'll say, wait this minute, do you need anything else? Is there anything else I can do for you? But when you owe somebody and you see them coming, you go around the corner that way, they go home and they feel bad. My father said they saw me and they went that, that way, and I, I just, I knew that they, they owed me, but I, I just wanted them to tell me they, they were trying, they wanted to pay. See, if we don't pay our bills, our prayers don't get higher than that. And you see, if, I, if I'm if i impatient with my wife the slightest bit, if I if I just get just a slight bit cross, whether my prayers don't get higher than that, they're hindered. They don't reach heaven. If I slightly murmur against any man, any woman, any neighbor, any friend, any enemy, if I slightly, then my prayers don't get higher than that. You can go on and on and on like yes, that. Sir. And you see Solomon, uh, the devil, the devil, and carnality says, you're the king. You can have a wife. So he took the second wife. He said, you're the king. Now the spirit that told him to take a second wife, you see, is the spirit also gets people to murmur. Right. 
uh, uh, the carnality said, you're the king and you can have what you want. So he took his third wife. That spirit that told him he could have his third wife is a spirit to see that causes the grudge and resent. It's carnality. It's one spirit. Just like a penny is as much of United States currency as a dollar bill. Yes, sir. It's all currency. And you see, the devil said, and you see, Solomon was one of the great men. Oh, how we loved him. Because he had, he had the word of God and made this statement. Finally, brethren, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep all his commandments. And after he found that out, the enemy said, now I'll tell you, you're the king, so take the fourth wife. So he took the fourth wife. Because God said, thou shalt not commit adultery. So the spirit that told him he, he could just do what he pleased, you see, is that old carnal nature in us. And I can tell that in my heart now. Yeah. And so you see the spirit that had him, he said, you're a king, take the fifth wife. So he took five wives. And the spirit that told him to take the fifth wife was the spirit that will tell men, well, just have your way a little. And murmur and complain and have unbelief. Yeah. The same spirit. And so he said, you're king. So he took the sixth wife on until he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And yet the Song of Solomon, the parallel with Jesus Christ and the church, he wrote it right here in this book. The Song of Solomon. The beauty of Jesus with the church is right here. But this precious man forgot because carnality was so strong to try to get him to say, well, just go ahead now. You know all these beautiful things here. And you see, it's by God's grace that I cannot fall. It's by God's grace that men will not fall over women. Yes. Because men will fall over women and money and disobedience even about anything. That's true. Absolutely. Men are carnal. Why, we see beautiful women and desire money. And if we're not careful, we disobey God. And when those things happen, we grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And do a great injury to our family and to our neighbors oh, yeah. and to our people yeah. and to our posterity. And grieve the Holy Spirit. So tonight... As we look into the scriptures and we see that God loves us to be a pure people. That touches my heart. But we cannot be pure except through Jesus' blood. He said, blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed. And that comes with the cleansing of his blood. That we obey him and follow what Jesus said. Now you see tonight in this last hour and <clears throat> 35 minutes, we have been covering the areas of the kingdom of God in fellowship and in truth. Yes. Yes, sir. Which if we find God's will to do it, then we're partakers of the divine nature. Adding to our faith, virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, tempest, tempest, godless, godless, brother, kindness, brother, kindness, love. For if these things be in you and abound, that they shall make you that ye shall be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Two verses on down there, he said, if you do these things, ye shall never fall. That means if you don't do it, we fall. Yes, sir. Uh, a great man and he you see we cannot stand in our own strength it's only as we become nothing and forsake all to do his will <clears throat> when we do his will oh what joy it is what peace it is when we do God's will and we only do God's will by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, Solomon knew the Bible. He knew the scriptures. But he didn't go by the Spirit. He went by the carnal nature, saying, take another woman. Yes. 
See, a person that's carnal cannot be led of the Holy Spirit. You'll be led of the carnal nature. That's why we have to be cleansed constantly of the carnal nature. Our, our revelation will not be of Jesus. It will be of the enemy. When you say it works with you, it works back with me. Gone. See, when gone. it gets in you, it comes Praise back in me, Lord. Charles. Lord, God, I'm glad, brother. Because, you see, we're indebted to Jesus for that. Oh, yeah. Because we're, we're in the very basic of the scriptures. Uh, the carnal nature will, will make the arrangements and, and take care of the whole thing and crowd Jesus out and will not know it, except by the witness of the Holy Spirit, by the word of God, by the truth of God. Yes, sir. And so you see, the carnal nature said, just take another woman. Yeah, you're the king. You can have what you like. It's not hurt too bad. You're getting along all right. Just take another one. So he did. So I have prayed now for the last 40-some years that I would not fall at the waters of Mirabal, look over the wall of Bathsheba, get my head in the lap of Delilah, sell out for 30 pieces of silver, or bring Agag the king back, or the best oxen and sheep, or to go to Tarsus instead of Nineveh, or to sell out for 30 pieces of silver, or to get close to the Babylonish garment and the wedge of gold, <coughs> or to let any person intrigue me to the place where I could so succumb to some dark temptation and lose lose the guidance, the inviting Jesus. And see, God has wanted all men to follow him. And he said, a few will find it. And everyone that wills to do Jesus' will, he will lead them through and take them through. That's the great part. You don't have to worry. When you follow Jesus, you have everything. Yes, sir. You have everything when you follow Jesus. What I mean by everything, you have peace and joy and love. And compassion, because compassion flows out of the spiritual mind. And murmuring and finding fault comes out of the carnal mind. So you can't get salt water and fresh water out of the same fountain. So when anybody knows that when they find fault and murmur, it's not the fountain of Jesus. It's the carnal fountain. When we're lost, we know it's not Jesus, it's the carnal nature. When we want to gamble and take chances, we know it's not Jesus because he said, follow me. And he's not in that kind of business. He's in the business of saving souls and sanctifying believers Amen. and healing bodies and minds and doing God's will. And that great assignment is loving our neighbors ourselves, loving our enemies. Yes, That's a great work. And we go out on the highways and look after the widow and the orphan and the fatherless. See, that's the work of Jesus. That's not the work of man, and some men can do it. But God's work is to take care of the poor and the needy and help those that are discouraged and distressed and to give love everywhere. And when the love of Jesus is in you, it just flows to everybody. It just flows out. There's great love. Boy, I need more and more of his love, how precious it is. This morning, last night, I had such a great time last night. The night before, oh, yesterday before, I think about how wonderful it is when I was in the mountains and, and my secretary called me and said, he said they're wanting to know if any of your staff members can come to Oklahoma to celebrate Reverend Ryan's 17th anniversary from the time God revealed it to me he was to go there. See, the Holy Ghost told me in a testimony meeting in St. Louis that he was to go from Ashland, Kentucky to Oilden, Oklahoma. That was 17 years ago last August. And so when God gave me the revelation, I said, Dorothy Lowner, I said, you go to the telephone and call the chairman of the board of the church and tell them God just revealed who their pastor is. So she went, she and Sister Kenny prayed, went to the telephone, called Mr. Grant, and told them that the Holy Ghost had revealed by the power of the witness of the Spirit that Brother Ryan in Ashland, Kentucky was the pastor in Oil, Oklahoma. So Brother Grant said, Brother Grant said, well, now, if this is God, he put out two pleasures. He said, if this is God, 
that is revealed there, then, God, I'm going to ask that the pastor be at home when I call and that he has resigned his pastor before I call. That's the two pleases the chairman of the board put out. Now, it's not wise sometimes to put out a plea. It's better to pray and get the witness and see if it's God's will by the witness of the Holy Ghost in your own heart. But it takes a lot of death to do that, and we can't do it ourselves except God be merciful to do it. We can't do it. We can't get it unless God gives it. See, we don't merit that. It's the gift of God. So I want to tell you, by his mercies, we'll ever know it again. Every revelation, we want to give Jesus all the glory. Someone's having pain in the right side. Behold, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, heed of thee. Praise God. It's in the appendix area. This morning, I don't know, someone was healed right there. You remember that this morning? And last night, someone was healed in the back. You remember that? They didn't ask you, but God told us about it through the Holy Ghost. Now, you were there. And we're in debt to Jesus for all he does for it. So, when, when uh, Mr. Grant made the call from Oklahoma to Ashton, Kentucky, it's about 900 miles, I think, 800, 900. And uh, when he made the call, the, the moment he called, Reverend Ryan was to be where Donna, his wife, was working to pick her up. She was waiting for him. He called when Reverend Ryan was to pick his wife Donna up at the place where she works. That's what he called. Now, how's he going to be there? Because that's his plea. Yeah. Yeah. See, God told me. I knew God told me, but the Holy Ghost, but God's raised. Yeah. He gave me the revelation that he was a pastor and the Lord wanted him there. But he said, if, he's, if this is God, you have him there where he hears the telephone. And that time... He was supposed to pick his wife up. They'd done that day after day and week after week. But he's got to violate that now. Yes. He's got to violate that to take care of this fleet. Yes. 900 miles away. Okay. So he's constrained and he comes in there and the telephone's ringing. See, he's pressed. Yes. So it's ringing. He runs to the telephone. She's both right then to be, she's waiting for him. Yes. She's wondering what's wrong. Did he have a flat tire or an accident or forget me? That's something to think about. Yes, sir. She had to violate his word to pick her up at a certain time in order to fulfill a fleece. So we have to be careful how we pray. Yes. But you see, the, the chairman wanted to be sure it was God. He didn't want it to be a man. He wanted it to be of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. See, we've got marvelous things here to consider. Yes. yes. So he was constrained to get the get home, and the telephone was ringing. What if he'd have waited ten seconds more? Oh, look what it all missed! It would have been. Look at all the things over there that's been missed because we weren't on time, yes, or we asked a certain thing. Yes, sir. Oh, when judgment reveals the things. That, oh, when you say to say, oh, why did I miss this? Why did I come short? So. Mr. Grant said, are you Reverend Ryan? He said, yes, I am he. Uh, I am calling you about a church in Oklahoma. And immediately Reverend Ryan said, who knows me in Oklahoma? How could they ever know me in Oklahoma? <laughs> well, God had revealed it to me in Missouri. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, none of them knew Brother Ryan and Donna and their six children, but I was with them in a meeting April the 23rd to the 30th of 69, and about the fourth or fifth or sixth night, the Holy Ghost came to me. I didn't know it. Just like tonight. See, I didn't know what I was going to say here. I have nothing planned. No, sir. I prayed, though, 25. I, I prayed when I was 24, 25, 26, 27 years of age that Jesus could so cleanse my heart so he could speak through me the words he'd say if he were there. Now, I never read that in any book. I'm 71 next February. But I started praying when I was in the 20s that God would somehow cleanse my heart work in me that he could speak to me what he would say if he were there in person. Oh, whoever taught me to do that? I never heard it at home. No. I never heard it at church because I don't read after men. 
done very little reading of books written by men in my lifetime. But you see, here is a here's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yes, sir. God is helping us. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. He's helping us. It's in, in your heart, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, it is. And I'm so indebted to Jesus for all he's done, what he's doing. See, God is working in his heart about the fact that we wanted to be cleansed so Jesus could speak to us what he would yes, say. Because if we say what we say, it doesn't do good. But if we say what he says, then it will heal. It will live. It won't hurt. It won't bruise. It won't cause stagnation. It will cause life. Help. Yes. yes. God. I'm so thankful. See, when Jesus called me 65 years ago in the inner voice, my mother said the Holy Ghost fell on me as I was born and on her. He bore five more sons and said it never happened to her. But you see, it was through the Holy Spirit to help me to pray back when I was 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 years of age that some way through the blood of Jesus he could cleanse my heart so he could speak to me what he wants to. But I have to resist the devil all the time. And I have to tell him, Mr. Liar, get behind yes, me. Sir. Because the devil tempts me severely. And I say, get hence. I want to be pure in heart. Yes. I want the holy sacrifice, Jesus, our Savior. Hallelujah. And so here God was working and revealed that Brother Ryan was to be the pastor. And Mr. Grant said to Brother Ryan, I see the first fleece, he's passed the test. Yes, sir. He violated, he violated the fact that he couldn't be where he's supposed to be. He couldn't keep his word. Because a man had prayed, have him there. And he was constrained. So the first flea is out of the way. And as they talked, this precious brother said to Reverend Ryan, he said, have you resigned? He said, yes, as of yesterday. He had intended not to resign until the next week. Glory to God. He had intended not to resign until the next week. But when I was speaking a while ago about the fifth or sixth night, I was saying, before I knew it, it came to my lips. If you people of this church do not obey God, the Lord's going to take Brother Ryan to another church. And I said, I didn't know I was going to say such a thing. I had any idea. It came right to me that if the people of the church do not obey the Holy Spirit, now they're going to have to die to do that. Yes, sir. God was going to take him away. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. So when Jesus revealed, now you see the chairman of the board, it's, he, he accepts that God's in it. See, I knew he was in it by the witness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the way you know. Yes. Anything I tell you, it's the Holy Ghost. And you are obedient and you love everybody in the world. Now, if you don't love everybody in the world, you won't have the witness. But if you love everybody in the world, your enemies that you're praying to, if you obey God and you're willing to follow, and you follow it as best you know how, on and on and on and on and on, then the Holy Spirit begins to witness to you. And when you hear truth, the Holy Ghost witnesses Glory. in your heart. Glory. See, it was in him, it was in him, a number of you. So we have yes. the witness. See, you don't have to guess at this. By the grace of God, through the Holy Spirit, as he works in the heart, by the power of his Spirit inwardly, yes. the witness is within the heart. Glory. How's that? Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Right there. Oh, we want to sanctify it and keep covered with the blood for Jesus, you see, because, oh, it means everything to do God's will. Oh, I am nothing, but he is everything. I am least, but he is everything. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So Mr. Grant says, well, what I asked God to do, he's done it. He's resigned. But he didn't have any intention to resign. Brother Brother Ryan came in that morning. The more people there than usual. Oh, it was a wonderful meeting. Oh, the, and he said, I resigned the church. They cried. They said, oh, no. He said, I resigned right now. He said, Jesus is telling me now to resign the church. Thank you, man. He didn't know he's going Can to do it? it. That's right. If we oh, could hear it. Can we hear it? He said, I have to resign. They said, oh, don't resign. We love you. We're having a great time. He says, I've got to leave you. See, God has spoke to me. If they didn't all obey the Holy Spirit, yes, he would take them away. Yes. And then he, re he see, the Holy Ghost told me that he was a pastor in Arizona, Oklahoma. That's right in my heart now with power. God. See, that's revelation from God in Christ. Yes, sir. And I didn't know anything. No. But he's everything. 
Praise the Lord. This was 17 years ago last August. Yes, sir. About the 15th, 16th, and Oliver was with us. My wife. And Thomas Harmon. And Roger Yoder. And they had the witness of...